No, it's not just you. This actually feels like a deja vu, um, but I had to take down the previous honeycomb tutorial and this time we will be redoing this. Um, I'm using Houdini 18.5, which has a few different um, add-ons. I'm using a few different techniques, so be sure to check out the new version of this. And also don't forget to join our ever-growing Discord server. And if you want to support me, I am quite active on Patreon with all my source files and I do actually offer mentorship as well. So check it out, the link is in the description below. And without further ado, let's just dive into Houdini and get going with version 2 of the Honeycomb tutorial. Alright, so let's get going. As you can see, I'm bringing in the asset in the top. I import it, I do some transformation, I match the size so it's more or less in real size and then I reverse to normal to make him look uh, in the proper direction. After that, I want to isolate the base here from the top. So I'm creating a few groups with normal operations um, just to isolate a few um, distinct areas. Then I do some... Um, replacing of existing groups and then I just isolate the bottom piece using the split operator which just splits um, something based on an input and the input right now is the group one which we defined so now we do have on the left the stand and on the right the top part of our asset this is obviously um, very dependent on what assets you bring in this is what I had to do to get it to work obviously if you have different assets it will be different so for this stand, what I did, I created a polyfill here just to um, cap off the top here. I remashed it um, so it's uh, more triangulated. I created a VDB from that, converted it back to poly, and I did some quick auto UVs on it just to have a nice um, um, UV grid so I can use a better um, noise pattern on it. So if I do a quick shade so you can see the UV layout, it's, it's quite uniform and it works well enough for my use case here. Not sure why it's not scaling, but this is the UV layout. And this is more or less everything I have to do with the stand. All I do then is assign our, my material to it, which is just the base material. And that's it. So now let's go into the more interesting part. We are going to the split again and we're going to the other side, which is the top part. And we just fuse those vertices so we have a nice um, merged points. After that, we need to fill um, this back here as well using the polyfill and then we can use the VDB from polygons which gives me a nice smooth uh, surface. After that I convert this back to a, con um, to a polygon and then we do the finally the remeshing to get that um, nice triangulated mesh. What is important here is that you make a higher iteration count, you get a uniform size of those triangles and then you divide the mesh and make sure the compute dual is on to get the hexagonal shapes. And then we do a few more things. Um, first of all, I um, do some extrusions here. And uh, the first thing what I want to do, and uh, let's just disable these guys for now. You can see I'm just using um, the inset operator just to get these nice um, thicker walls. And you can see if I go in a very fine um, increments, you can see how the walls are changing in size. And after that, I am um, using an extrude to push these points inwards or these faces. And then the last step would be to push them even further. And the reason I do it twice is because I'm using actually these uh, new um, nodes here to randomize those patterns. And if I view from the top here, I do have a, um, a noise pattern on the Z scale. And you can see now we have these nice colors. And what I'm using with the Z scale, I'm actually driving um, the extrusion with that. You can see now uh, red pieces go in deeper um, than the blue ones and you can see it quite clear that the blue one is not as deep as the red one and then I do this a similar thing with the scale height um, which is essentially the same thing just going on the opposite direction and you should see that it's just a slight adjustment nothing crazy and then we do have the last one uh, let's see what that is doing uh, let's disable this here for now and then go to the inset scale and this is essentially the thickness of how much I'm pushing these things in and if I go to the insets here and I disable this, you can see that we have here a few thicker ones and then we have thinner walls here. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just creating these things to um, get more randomization across that thing. Otherwise, it's just way too uniform. Uh, and this is actually an improvement of my previous tutorial. So this got a little bit better um, with more iteration. As you can see now, the honeycomb structure looks quite nice already. Um, next up, I do have two VDB from polygons. One is high, one is low res. And for now, I'm just using the low res one so I, you can see what I'm doing. I'm creating a small voxel size and I'm just using density here as my distance VDB and I'm making sure I'm filling the interior. And the volume VOB, which is essentially a volume operator, um, I'm creating these 
as if, as if it's like eaten out of from the inside. And this is quite easy to do. Um, you bring in your grids here and then you use an AI noise, which is essentially a noise um, um, operator. And you make sure you fit the range between zero and one, which is happening here. And then I'm doing two of those operations. So one noise for a broader one and then a one with a finer one. And I'm just adding those two noises together. They are both clamped. And then I'm adding them on the on the density which comes in so the original density plus these two noises and then i'm outputting the density and what happens here i expose these parameters so i have more control on the outside so i can change the frequency you can see now um, how it's moving through um, our asset we can change the roughness so we get way more smoother results or like high frequency which breaks up these interior parts more and we can have this kind of growing effect as well if we want to. And I, I, I find this was quite good. So I played around with those values until I was satisfied. After that, I converted this to a VDB again. And then we got the hexagons the, on the outside and on the inside is more these smoother surfaces, which should what I wanted to do because I wanted to kind of create this punny surface on the inside. Um, then I'm creating an attribute called hex core. And this is, I'm just resetting this to zero because what I'm doing, I'm actually transferring this attribute, which I did at the top here, transferring this onto our converted geometry. So now let me show you what I'm actually transferring over. So we go back up to our divide, which is here. And then I use a MOPS explode. What it's essentially doing, um, first of all, this is a third party plugin, which I can highly recommend. It's quite cool. And then what it's the explode is doing, it's it's actually extracting each hexagonal uh, shape to its own um, object, essentially. What I'm then doing, I'm using the add function to create, to create those center points around it. So um, what I'm doing here, I'm just saying delete the geometry, but keep the points, which then essentially gives me a centerpiece here for each of those hexagon shapes. After that, I'm creating attribute hex core. And how that looks like, it's essentially, um, let's just visualize this. It's a random... Um, it should be a random value here. Let's see if I visual, visualize that. Uh, let's see. So each point has now this hex shape of one hex core, right? So what I want to do is create an interior attribute for all these um, shapes here. So if I visualize our mesh and I visualize our hex core um, attribute transfer, you should see now that each of those um, hexagonal shapes has this centerpiece, which is red. And this is now driven by that point we created and then we just um, created a single value to it and then we transferred it over and now we have these kind of centerpieces which is quite good because we will be using that in shading and then for the other attribute which we use as a hex id and we again go uh, from this one and we apply a random um, id here if i visualize that and see now we have a unique number of value for each of those hexagonal shapes and I'm, I'm subdividing them just because when I use the add root transfer, I need to have way more points to be able to transfer everything over quite nicely. So that's why I'm doing that. And then I'm going into the add root transfer here. And you can now see um, that we do have these colors now onto our hexagonal shapes. It looks a bit choppy. The reason is because our mesh is not dense enough. But once we switch over to the high poly version up here, everything look, uh, should look better. And we can do this right now. So let's just switch over to the volume, the high poly, the high voxel count here. It takes a little bit more time to compute, but the result is a lot better. And see now we have a way smoother um, IDs everywhere. Everything seems a little bit better. And then on top of that, I'm applying a blur to blur out the um, hex core, which looks um, now like this. It's way smoother than before, before the um, blur. It's a bit choppy after we get a smoother transition, which is exactly what we want. Um, all right, so that is this. Let's see if we go back here. And then I'm just applying a single shader honeycomb onto our honeycomb structure, which now looks uh, like this. And I think it works quite well. And this is now the centerpiece. So now let's talk over um, the drips here. Again, we start from this. And this is our, just an object merge. I'm just essentially taking the last from the, from the bottom here and just putting it in the top. So we have a fresh, um, no intersecting wires and whatnot. Um, I'm creating normals. Let's see, normals. It's very dense, as you can see. So let me just switch back to the low version just for this, and we will switch back later. 
And then let's see, let's go back here. So now we should have a little bit less normals, a little bit less. <laughs> and then what I'm doing in the point wrangle, what I'm creating here is um, a surface flow of the normals. So essentially I'm doing two cross products. The first one is the existing surface normal, which is pointing outwards. And I'm using a cross product of that and an up vector, which gives me essentially a surface flow. And then I'm creating this as a new normal map and I'm crossing this again. And then I get this um, downward pointing um, normals which looks like this. And this is exactly uh, what I want. And this will be helpful in creating those honey drips. Next up, I'm scattering just points over the surface. And you can see um, it's, it's just random on the surface of, of, of the whole mesh. I just need those points to generate those trails, which will be um, responsible for the drips. Um, after that, I'm creating a VDB from Polygon. And this time, I'm actually disabling all the um, VDBs here and I'm just converting the normals which we created up here and I'm converting that into a velocity field. So essentially the velocity is pointing downwards. So everything is going downwards based on this uh, VDB volume here. And then on the right, I'm creating a surface and I actually think I don't use that anymore. Yeah, so we can essentially just ignore this. Um, let's just disconnect this. I don't have this anymore. So um, all we do now is we create this fancy volume grid and we're using volume trail by that. And then we get this kind of um, result based on our um, parameters we played around here. And in the volume bob, what we do, we get our velocity, which is the basic one driven from the normals up here. And then I'm just normalizing the velocity. So it's zero and one range. And then I'm mixing this together with a curl noise. And the curl noise is just a, um, a nice um, operator which creates some um, organic noise to it as if it's like a liquid noise. And I'm mixing these two together with some kind of bias. And then I'm just applying the original um, length of this vector back on using the multiply. And again, I expose these parameters on the outside so we can play with them. Essentially, this point 0.2 here is the mix. So this is essentially our regular velocity, which is going downwards. And then if it's on white, this is on one, this is a fully the curl noise. And I'm using point two to blend those two together. And based on these exposed attributes, we can play around with the curl noise to just play around with the noise, how um, broken up we want it and frequency and amplitude and roughness. And then I'm just, as I said, blending this with point two to get this kind of downward motion. After that, um, I'm creating a connectivity um, SOP here to iterate over each of those curves. And what I'm doing here, I'm creating for each curve we are, let's just show this. So if I um, just do a single pass here, um, this is now one curve I'm working with and you can see these are all the points on it. And I'm creating a curve view attribute, which means from zero at the root and one at the tip. And then I'm using a carve operator. And what that is helping me do is essentially define the length. I'm using a random function though on the, on the second U, which helps me to randomize the length. So I'm going over each iteration of each curve, writing a random number between zero and one. And then I'm fitting that value between a range of zero and one. And this is random because of each curve has a random seed. What that does then essentially is giving me lots of random lengths of all those curves. After that, I'm creating a random P um, P scale attribute on it to get different kind of sizes per point. And then I think I'm multiplying that with curve U to essentially have them fade off towards the end, right? So this is per curve. So if I now show all the curves, you should now see um, a lot more and different lengths of them, right? So these are currently the drips. We have lots of them, which is fine. And what I'm doing after is I'm creating a VDB from particles. So once I do that, I'm combining these all these little points or curves into like a blob of something. And you can see that they are tapering off towards the root. So they are getting thicker towards the end and they have a nice round finish. Um, then I'm combining this. I, essentially, I'm using our original shape, um, which is this here, and I'm combining them, but I'm using a difference or a, yeah, a difference to cut out the um, intersecting pieces. So we have a nice flush surface. Then I'm smoothing them after to get this nice kind of blob because honey like that it collects and creates one uh, larger pattern. And after that, I'm converting that back to a um, geometry with a convert VDB using polygons. And then we have this kind of mesh here. And once I bring it all together, 
we have something which looks like this. And you can see on the inside, we have these kind of organic little um, honey drips and then it's flowing around the surface. Right now we have a few floating ones and that's because I'm using a low resolution mesh. So now let's just switch over to the high and swap those out and we should get a better representation. All right, so now you can see we have a denser mesh and obviously you can always play around with the smoothing. If you think it's smooth too much, we can reduce that. So we have now more detail in those strips, but it's definitely up to you. You can play with all these parameters. And this just gave you an overview of essentially how to set up the geometry. And what we do now is we will actually dive into the shader because we did expo um, export the hex core and hex ID into the shader. And let me just show you how that is being applied. All right, so now let's dive into the material context where we do have all our shaders assigned. So we have a base, a honey and a honeycomb. Um, so I think we should just um, start the render and see um, what we're getting. So I'm just, um, all right, first up, I want to show you how I set up the base metal. So essentially just a quite a simple standard surface shader. Um, we just have a noise. Uh, if I plug that in, you should see the noise coming through, which is just a um, simple noise stretched in one axis. And I use the same for my um, anisotropy. So this is right now plugged into the specular rotation. And then I have the same one as my bump map and combined. This is like an anisotropic surface with some rougher um, surface here. So it's quite straightforward. So next up is the honeycomb, which is a very fun one. You can see it's not that complex at all. So if I jump um, all the way up here, maybe let me just hide the honey for now. All right, so this is now the shader which I have. And as you can see, um, it has quite nice complexities to it. But essentially what I'm doing, I'm starting out with the hex ID, which is the user data which we created. And if I show this in the render, this is what we have. And I'm using that in a ramp input here. And the ramp is my color of the, of the honeycombs itself. If I visualize that, you can see that we do get some kind of random pattern based on our input of the hex ID. And then we do a similar thing uh, with the hex core. So the hex core, again, just to re remind me, uh, remind you guys, looks like this. It's like the center of those uh, hex uh, hexagonal shapes. I'm using that as a, as a mask to drive the original color with a color correct. If I plug that in, you can see now, uh, based on the color correct node, I'm just reducing the gamma. And then we get these nice core, like the center core of this honeycomb structure. And then um, I'm using this again as my transmission scatter color, which is a little bit brighter and I think I'm more saturated. You see, um, this is now um, interestingly not as bright as I expected. But again, this goes into the transmission scatter. Just, this just gives you the smokier look of the, of the honeycomb. And that is essentially the shader. It's nothing crazy. You can see if I plug it in, um, the transmission essentially, it's not an SSS um, shader, it's a glass shader essentially. And if I disable the transmission, we only have the specular surface. What I could do, I could break up the, the specular with some noises as well. I didn't do that. I didn't bother doing this because it's covered, or most of it is covered with the honey itself. Um, but then if I bring back the transmission, you can see that we have this depth slider and the depth slider controls how thick the, the material is. So if I increase it, you can see it's more like glass. The more I reduce this, um, the more saturated and solid it gets. And as I ended up using 0.02 for the look. I think it was 0.02, it was 0.05. Um, I don't know, but it was something around this just to give us a nice little transmissive feel to everything. And if I show you the whole thing now, it looks quite organic and it looks like it says it's a solid piece of uh, material. Right, so that's the part for the honeycomb. You probably have thought it is way more complex than honey, but essentially this is very simple. I'm just creating this uh, glass shader, which is quite similar to the honeycomb. It has some color, it has some scattering to it, and it just gives you the, this nice um, drippy feel to it. Um, what you can do, you can create bubbles inside it if you want to. You can uh, add more um, volume or like some more scattering to it. But essentially, this is what it is. And if I now go back out to our um, image context where we do have the render. So and that this would essentially be the fine render. I added some little depth of field, nothing crazy, just to give us a little bit of scale. Um, and then this is our metal piece, our base. And then this is the honeycomb structure. And all these techniques are um, quite straightforward and is nothing really too complicated. And I think every one of you should be able to recreate this kind of effect here.
Alright, I hope you enjoyed the new version of this. Uh, I showed a few different techniques. It's a bit different workflow, but the result is quite amazing. So be sure to share your renders with me, tag me in your Instagram accounts, and also just um, share the video. It would be highly appreciated. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next one.